Hello, I'm Mark JB and welcome to my studio. Well, up to this point, uh, I've mostly been involved in house remixes. So uh, with my studio partner, Lee Dagger, who I mostly work with three days a week uh, on the Bimbo Jones project, we've had over 70 number ones in the UK and US and we had uh, uh, Mech Leo Sayer, Thunder of My Heart, which is number one in the national UK charts. Um, so we've we've had an amazing career working remixing Lady Gaga and Pink up here in the studio. We've we've worked with uh, Cindy Lauper and uh, Casey and Sunshine Band, Leo Sayer, Beverly Knight. All these are unbelievable artists. The, the the talent that that we've been lucky enough to meet has been incredible over the years. But looking to the future, the music industry has changed a lot. Uh, record companies don't have as much money as they used to, so I'm moving much more in a film and TV direction. And I've been lucky enough to work on some fantastic projects recently. I've just made a disco album. In fact, I've been making disco for the last five years, um, and I have a record company called Soul Deluxe. And uh, I made a future disco album that uh, came out way before everybody else was on the disco vibe. But that's only because I love disco so much. I've pretty much been doing it for my entire life. Um, I have uh, got a, a chill step album, which is just about to come out. Um, a, um, a deep guitar album. The next Bimbo Jones album has been given the green light. So that's coming out basically anything goes. Back in the day, which is probably about uh, 20 years ago now, uh, C-Lab Notator was great but it had its limitations and I was trying out Cubase and Logic as well but I found that the Logic interface was very difficult because you had to set up all of the the MIDI um, routing and audio routing behind the scenes and Cubase just seemed a lot better and easier to work with. Cubase is absolutely packed full of amazing synths. You've got the vintage compressor, which is really crunchy, warm and valvey. You've got their new um, reverb called Revelation, which is unbelievable. You can get the most incredible 60 second silky reverbs, like you used to be able to only get off 20,000 pound Lexicon units. And that's all included in the software. We're gonna start off by giving a little tour of the studio. Now, uh, I'm working off a Macintosh computer and I've got Cubase here. Um, I'm on the Cubase 7.5, but just about to put in Cubase 8. Very excited about the new changes. Um, wonderful program to work with, very intuitive. I don't really think about the, uh, the, the processes of using it. It just allows the creativity to flow straight through. The most important thing I have in the studio is my vocal chain. So I've got just over here a Neumann U47 microphone, which originally came from Studio 303. This is made in, in the nine, late 1940s, I think. And inside it, it has got the spit of Whitney Houston, the spit of Will I Am, and the spit of Robbie Williams. So if you cloned a human being from that microphone, goodness knows what it would turn out as. <laughs> so the microphone goes into my beautiful Neve preamp, which is uh, 8801. And that just has some very small compression on it, a little bit of brightening as well. And the result of the sound that I get into the computer is absolutely sparkling and immaculate, fits in anything. I've got a Mackie Onyx 16 channel desk. And even though I have a small studio here, I've had the brand new heavies recording in here for two weeks. And with the desk, I had the drummer with nine mics on. I had the bass player sitting on the sofa at the back on cans because DIing a bass is fine. And then I had the guitarist, Simon, with the amp into the eaves in the uh, loft space. And he was on cans as well. So I had no bleed from anyone. Um, I've also got some fabulous guitars and these are my lovely HR824 Mackie speakers. I've also been using some Dynaudio DBX50s, um, but at the moment I'm using these because they are minus 3 dB at 30 Hz, which means that they are very accurate for club material. Whatever you hear on here in a, in a nightclub, in a car, it's going to sound pretty, pretty accurate. And with my studio set up here, I have some bass traps at the back and I've got some other 
acoustic proofing around and that means that I have quite a nice tight sound but with any space you're going to have room nodes that you just can't get rid of unless you've got £20,000 worth of studio proofing around you. So I use a system called Arc, uh, Arc 2 by IKE Multimedia and what that does is you have a measurement microphone, it gives you some uh, sine sweeps out of the speakers and you measure various points around your listening position and then it corrects all the frequencies in your rooms. So out of these speakers here, I have an absolutely and completely flat sound coming out, which is fabulous. I also have here the CC121 controller because sitting in front of the computer screen for eight hours a day, not only is it important to have decent posture when you're sitting, but it's also important to relieve the stress on your wrists. You know, come on producers, how many of you have got wrists and fingers that are hurting from tapping on mice all day? So I've got this CC121 controller, which is very handy because I can go into any channel and I can immediately adjust gain, EQ, panning settings, uh, writing and automation solo and mute without having to click on anything else. Also with this AI knob here, whatever you hover over, that will change the parameter there. So it's a very handy thing just to relieve carpal tunnel or, or un unnecessary stress on your hands. So let's open a new instance of Groove Agent. This is based on the MPC, musical historians out there. Anyone over the age of 35 will know what an MPC is. For all you uh, younger guys out there and girls, MPC was on the first or drum machines with pads. And if you had an MPC, you could get work in the studio anywhere. It was just simply because you had an MPC. I'm now gonna grab all of that sliced up audio and I'm gonna drop it straight into the Groove Agent. So here we go. There we are. And you can see here, it's put all of the audio slices onto different channels. So. Hours of fun! Right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to play the music and then we're going to play all our silly little sliced up bits of audio and see what works with the mix. Okay, let's listen to the track. Okay, that sounds good. Sounds good, but it doesn't sound that good. So let's keep on going. Right, I'm going to keep on going because, let's see, we've just got a fun. Okay, let's go with that. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to add a little bit of reverb and delay onto it as well, just to help it sit in the mix. There we are, that's all we need to play in. Let me check that it's all in okay, yeah. Good, so let's cut it there. Uh, two bars, so we can copy it out the track. But just going to key commands, if you set up some basic key commands for duplicate and copy and delete and etc., you're gonna make your life a hell of a lot easier. So I've got a really simple one, which is just Control D, and that saves so much time. I've just got up a ping pong delay, so let's now apply that onto that cut up vocal. Okay. I feel it needs to be an eight. Here we go.
There you are. So now that helps that sit in the mix much better. So that's kind of a nice way to cut up vocals. And you'll be really surprised once you put a vocal idea, cut it up and then put it into Groove Agent, you will end up taking your track in an entirely new direction. Another idea is a fantastic little thing in Cubase called Loop Mash, and we're going to use that to do some creative effects on the guitar. So here we've got the guitar. Now let's get Loop Mash up. Loop Mash does several things, it stutters your audio, it does drop downs, which actually I found more effective to do drop downs like originally on the Avicii tracks. Uh, by using the pitch control uh, in Cubase. But Loop Mash, however, it's brilliant for doing the stutter stuff. So let's have a listen. You can apply this to a track by um, doing a write and then it will be saved in the automation. You can also set up another MIDI track to fire everything off on your MIDI keyboard, but just for the sake of the piece now, we'll do it using the automation. Right, so we engage the W button, which is right automation, which means whatever we do to anything is gonna remember it when we play back the track. Let's take it back to the left-hand locator. Let's put the rest of the track in as well so we can hear it all. Okay, now let's actually fire off the different loop mash features as we go through the track. Here we go. There you go. So it's as easy as that. Don't forget to turn the right automation button off because if you carry on messing around with it, it will then remember everything that you've then done and you will be in the complete mess. Now, one of the great features about Cubase is you can now go and have a look on the screen what you've just done. So let's have a look. If you do a right hand click on the guitar track and go to show used automation selected tracks, it will now show you exactly what we've done there to fire off the loop mash. So let's have a look at that now with the automation and also what's happening here on Loop Mash. There you are, a very simple and effective and exciting way of getting a really out the world effect. Now I'm going to show you how to use creative reverb to bring in a vocal. Do you remember listening to 80s records? Some of you still listen to 80s records, but some of you probably never heard 80s records. But back in the day on the Queen tracks, they used to use piano notes that they played them and then they reversed them. So they went right into your face. But we're gonna do the same thing, but with a vocal. So first we need to find a little bit of vocal. You can use the reverse reverb effect anywhere, but it's very effective if you use it coming out of a break into uh, where the drums come in. So let's have a listen for a nice bit of vocal. Okay. Right, I really want something where the vocal's coming straight in. Right, that is a very lovely little piece of vocal to use for this effect. So let's pop that down onto a new channel. All right, so here we go. What we're gonna do is, this is, this point here is where the track comes back in. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a really long reverb tail on the yeah, so, and it's gonna be coming in really slowly and join up with that yeah to give it real effect when it comes in. So first things first, we need to reverse the audio. So here we go. That's now reversed. Let's have a listen to that. What was the shortcut key for reversing? 
I have another key command key, which is Shift R, which reverses audio, which I use all day long and saves me hours every year. So here we have the reversed audio of Angie. Right, I'm going to copy that down onto the next track and I'm going to set the left and right locators to be really big. I'm now going to apply some liberal reverb to that. So let's get up my favourite reverb revelation. Right, here we go. So... There we are. Now we've got an outrageously long, lush reverb on there. We want quite a, well, we want 100% reverb level on that. I'm now going to export this reversed vocal down with the reverb effect on it. So here we go. Audio 11. Let's call that Fox Reverse. Okay, that is going to go... Um, I'm calling this Fox Rev, Fox Reverse, and it needs to be a WAV file, 24-bit, which is what I normally work in. Uh, just talking about sample rates quickly, just going off on a tangent. Uh, for normal music, CDs operate on 44.1 kilohertz at 16-bit. But what you want to do is do all your music in 24-bit and then mix down to the 16-bit for the CDs. But if you're doing film or TV music, everybody across the world works at 48K. So start the project the way you mean to go off. Right, let's mix that down now, back into our track. There we are, let's have a listen. Great, so you can hear we've got a really long reverb tail on there. I'm now gonna reverse that. So let's select that and reverse it. Okay, now what I need to do is I need to line that up with the original vocal. Right, so here we are. Oh, hang on a second. That needs to go there, that needs to go there. Now let's listen to the original vocal clip that we had before we started messing around with reversing the reverbs, etc. This is it here. Yeah. Okay, now let's listen to our reverse reverb here. That should be starting to come in now. Yeah. There you are. So you want to line those up so they happen at the same time. Okay, now let's play in the track. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna really bring the level of that right up and I'm gonna snip it where the track comes in so you can hear what it sounds like. Here we go. Right, I think we need to just um, increase that a little bit. Okay, and then as the vocal's coming in, let's have that disappear. So let's just do a tiny bit of an edit there. Right, now let's have a listen. So. There you go. That is how you do the reverse vocal effect. I'm going to show you another creative reverb technique. Uh, this time we are going to use it to create drama suspense. Uh, we're going to increasingly add reverb to um, an element of the track during a break and it's going to get to a level where it's really drowning out the rest of the mix and then when the drums come back in it's going to suddenly stop which is going to um, make everything really punchy and clear and it sounds very exciting for audiences as well. So we're going to use... this here. And I'm simply going to do it by putting a reverb on top and then slowly increasing the amount of reverb on there and when the track kicks back in I'm going to kill it. Okay, let's press W to write automation. Right, and what we want to do, let's see where the drums, the drums are coming in at 49. So we slowly want to push this up until 49 and then pull it straight down again. So here we go. There we are. When you're in a club, 
and this is a solo element playing, this sounds absolutely amazing. This is one thing that really gets audiences excited. Right, okay, so let's have a look at the automation here. Okay, so at 49, let's push it up a little more. We need to kill it back down to zero. Very useful thing on Cubase is you can just grab a little bit of the automation beforehand and you can copy it to the point that you want it to be killed. There we go. So now that will be coming up in a mix and it's going to be killed here. There we are. Now let's have a listen in the mix and see what the effect is. That's a really good way of getting audiences excited. Um, if you try it on your EDM top line arpeggios, that works an absolute treat. So I'm now gonna show you two really exciting things. First, I'm going to give you some ideas about what you could add into the track to bring it to the next level. Then I'm gonna show you how to make this into a very quick 12 inch that you can literally give to your DJ mate or if you DJ out yourself, you can go to a club and go, give it to DJ, play this. And then you can be in an audience and actually hear it. Uh, back in the beginning of Bimbo Jones, I was knocking on A&R doors. I was, I was go, just put so much effort into trying to get the music out there. And really it was me and my gran and my mum who were hearing the music and nobody else. But when I met my lovely friend Lee, Lee Dagger, who's the other half of Bimbo Jones, um, he was DJing a lot in, in wonderful clubs back in the day like The Cross and Miss Money Pennies. And we would make a song during the day in the studio, we'd go down to the club, he would play it off CD, and then I would go and sit on the sub bass speakers with everyone completely off their nuts, watching everyone dance. And everyone was like, Who's that bloke sitting on the sub bass speaker with the clipboard? That was me, because I was actually there just seeing what the reaction was in the club, having a listen to the sound, how it changes in the club, and seeing how long we could string people along on the breaks, etc. So I'm going to show you how to quickly turn a very simple groove into a club mix for a DJ. So looking at, first looking at the additional elements we could add. You could add, add some nice sparkly synths. You want to keep everything very simple and rather than thinking about bass lines, you want to be thinking about melodies and lead things in the mix. So maybe an arpeggiated synth, um, maybe find some, some uh, more vocal cut-ups to go in, but subtle things, maybe some more drum beats to layer on top, but just things that will go into the mix to, to uh, add and take away. But you shouldn't have too much stuff in there. You should just make the best of the small uh, but amazing elements that you have in there. Let's quickly look at a DJ mix. What a DJ needs, he needs drums, so he can mix the track in. He needs the track, in the middle, he needs a break, so everybody has a little space to clear their eardrums of the outrageously loud music and uh, not have too bad tinnitus in the morning. Then it needs to go back into the track and then you need to have drums going out so he can mix the next track in. So rough timings for a DJ mix would be anywhere between six and about seven and a half minutes but there are no rules. So you are free to go ahead and do yourself a three second DJ mix. I don't care, it's all up to you. So let's quickly arrange this into a DJ mix. Right, so here we go. This is the main body of our track here. I'm going to take this up here. So first we need the drums. So let's take the kick first here. At the beginning of the track, you want a signature sound. You want a little sound in there that's not gonna to clash too much with all of the other melodic components of the track that the DJ's mixing out, but you want a little signature sound. So immediately as it comes in, everyone goes, that's that track. So I'm gonna put in my Groove Vox track, which is the cut up vocal. So here we go, let's have a listen to those together.
Let's get the crash in there at the beginning as well. And also I'm gonna put in a simple hi-hat as well. So let's take these hi-hats here and put those in. Okay. You can hear, that's brilliant. That is so simple and powerful. Instantly, everyone knows it's your track because it's got that signature vocal sound. It's got the kick, so it's gonna sound massive in a club. And it's just got a hi-hat, which just keeps everything locked in. So that is a good way to start off a track. So let's, right, let's have a look. At nine, we're at 15 seconds. And at 25, we're at 45. 30 seconds is a kind of good amount of drums to have at the beginning of the track for DJs to mix in. Everything's changed with Tractor and BeatSync these days because DJs can actually mix in a, a three and a half minute radio song immediately if that's what they're doing. But this is old school. Let's stick to the old school. You know, this is, this is talking about people back on the day with the vinyl. Let's show some respect to that. So here we go, we start the track with that. I think after 30 seconds, we'll repeat that and we'll add in, um, let's add in just a bit of guitar. But we'll put the guitar onto another channel. And let's, Let's put an effect on that guitar. So um, we're going to put uh, the fabulous Fab Filter Simplon on there. This is Fab Filter Simplon is simply the best filter on the market at the moment. So yeah, this is a good place to start it. And as the song goes on, you want to start opening up that filter a bit. People know what the song is. And it's all about creating tension release in dance music. And you want to slowly bring up the level of stuff and then slowly simmer it back down again. Right, so here we go. You can see there, that's rising up. One of the brilliant features on uh, Cubase is that you have got um, the ability to see the automation on that. So here you can see the automation of the filter coming up. Right, so then I'm just gonna have a tiny break here, with the crash. So this is it. Everyone has heard the track coming in. This is a time where everyone puts their hands in here and goes, I love this track. Right, at that point, after that, I'm gonna bring it back into the main section of the track. Okay, and then we're gonna go through all the tracks, it's gonna build up with all of its elements here. Right, and then I'm going to go into break. If I was really going into this, I'd be putting in effects going and thunder impacts, etc. but just for now, I'm just going to show you basically with what we've got, how we're going to make the DJ mix. So you can see here it's building up, building up, building up. Then we want to get some more exciting drums and etc. And then maybe let's bring in uh, the bass and the guitar at that point. So here we go, bass and guitar, and then and a vocal as well. So you want to get your theme back in. You can see where I'm going now. Okay, so now we're back into dancing again. We've had our break, we're back in. This is the final bit of the song. After this, we just need to go into beats so the DJ can mix out again. So let's have a look at that up here. So let's copy up the beats. Right here we go. That's it there. I'm gonna do 30 seconds of beats and put in that vocal thing again. 
Right. So it's coming out of the tune. Now we're going into DJ mix out time. So let me put that all on screen so you can see the whole thing. At the moment we are running to exactly six minutes, which is perfect for this track. This is a good time for this track. So here we are, at the front here, we have DJ mix in with just drums, then I'm introducing in some guitar on a filter. This is getting everyone excited. I'm going into first mini drop. You don't have to follow any of these things, of course. These are all rules that can be broken. But over 15 years of making dance music, this really works well. And this is the Bimbo Jones secret formula. Bimbo Jones secret formula. So here we are. So there you go, there's the main bit of the song. Then we're back into our main break here. I'll put some kind of fill. There we are, and then just coming out the main bit of the song. And then we've got the DJ mix out there, and that is how to make a DJ mix. <laughs> 